In this video, we'll be walking through how I made one of the sides of the DMC-1 arm. On the arm I made, there are two sides to the lower segment that form the load-bearing structure. These two quarter inch plates are pretty much identical, minus some small features and of course the text on one side. If you haven't seen the entire arm, I recommend you go check out my other video on the arm itself. So first taking a look at the CAD file, we're machining this piece here. It has stand-ups that mount to it from the back and three pressed in bearings. One is a flange bearing and two are oil light bearings from McMaster car. On the front side we have the text which is just an extruded cut into the part, as well as the counter bores for the heads of the bolts to sit into. And on the back side, there's a bore for the flange bearing to sit into, and a bunch of pocketed sections for weight reduction. The top and bottom edge also both have holes drilled in and threaded to bolt the cover onto, but I'm not going to worry about those for now. So going over to Fusion 360, I'm going to machine this part in two operations. First, I'm starting with the back and using a 4mm end mill to adaptive out the material in the holes, and then the rest of the material for the weight reduction pockets. Next, I'm doing a contour to clean up the faces of the bore holes since the adaptive isn't ideal for surface finishes. And finally, I'm contouring out the entire part. Looking at the simulation, it should go something like this. So to machine this part, I'm starting off with a piece of quarter inch thick 6061 T6 aluminum sheet. I've cut it to approximately 4 inches by 10 inches, and I'm using the blue tape trick to mount it to a clean, flat surface. For those of you that don't know, it's basically where you tape both the part and the bed, and then super glue the backs of the tape together, and it holds pretty strongly. With a blue tape trick, you need to pry your part off the bed to get it off. You have to be careful not to bend your part and not to scratch the finished part, and also not to scratch the bed itself, otherwise you'll ruin the flat surface and then you'll need to remachine it. For some reason there's a little bit of material left at the bottom. I didn't measure the stock material and it's probably just a hair over a quarter inch thick. Anyways, it's so thin we can just pop it out with a little force. And here's the part. 
I hit it with a file at the edge just so it doesn't have any sharp corners. Since I want a black part with silver text, I'm going to paint the part now and then machine the text into the painted part after it dries. For the second operation on the front side, we're first going to bore out the counter bore holes and then bore out the clearance holes with a 4mm end mill. And then I'll switch to a smaller end mill to do the fine detail text. I'm using a 3mm end mill for the larger text and a 1mm end mill for the smaller. Since my vise is mounted to hold things front to back and I haven't drilled the mount holes for left and right, I realized I'm going to need to do half of the text and then spin the part to do the other half since the text is too long. Now on the opposite side we're using the 1mm end mill for the fine text. And you're going to see really soon I'm taking too deep and too fast to put cut. And snap my only 1mm end mill. So here's the finished part. It came out really well. There are some little scratches in the paint and of course the small text isn't finished. Here's another example of the plate I made earlier. This was the original and as you can see it's pretty beat up. Originally, I had the bolt head sticking out, and then I drilled holes by hand to put flush countersunk bolts, and they turn out a bit ugly by hand. So then I finally changed the design to have flush counterboard holes for regular M5 socket head bolts. If we compare the text on both actually, you can see that the original is clean and flat, and this new one has a huge burr on the edges, which is a sign that the end mill was getting dull and not cutting well just before it snapped. I did make a third plate afterwards and install it off camera, so here is how the whole thing looks assembled. I hope you learned something new and I hope you enjoy the video. See you in the next one.